Welcome. We're learning about plugins and the plugin API of Drupal. Before we get super technical, let's take a moment and think about the word plugin itself. Plug in. As you go about your day, what are some of the things you plug in? Lots of things, probably. Occasionally during my day, I'll plug in various USB devices, electrical devices, etc. The things you plug in can be plugged in because they follow design standards. This allows for a single interface that is multi purpose. That, in turn, offers the benefits of compatibility and swappability of the things designed to use the plugin. With USB devices, for example, a USB memory stick is much different than a USB receiver for a wireless keyboard. What is common between those two devices, though, is that they both use the USB technical standard, and it's that standard which essentially allows me to plug in or swap those devices when I need to. Now, Drupal plugins more or less act in a similar manner. Drupal plugins are a general reusable solution to a recurring need. The plugin API is a standard, a way of structuring your code, and the plugin API is used for solving a specific Drupal need in many different situations. A classic situation of a plugin is using code to define a custom block. The implementation of a custom block is a plugin, using the plugin type of block. We're going to hit some jargon here, stay with me. While I explain this bit, keep blocks in the back of your mind as an actual use case for plugins. Broadly speaking, the plugin system provides a set of guidelines and reusable code components to allow developers to expose pluggable components within their code. Further, if needed, the plugin system also supports managing those components through Drupal's user interface. Recall using blocks. All those available blocks have the ability to be configured through the UI, for instance. The basic idea of the plugin API is to allow a particular module, or perhaps a particular subsystem of Drupal, to provide functionality in an extensible, object-oriented way. The controlling module, or the controlling subsystem, is what defines the plugin interface. Said another way, the plugin interface is the framework of the basic functionality of the plugin type. What happens then is eventually other modules create plugins implementing the established plugin interface with particular behaviors. Moving beyond blocks, as a strong example module, the views module leverages many plugins. One example of a plugin is the display format of a view. Recall that by default, views offers the displays of unformatted list, table, HTML list, and grid. Realize each of those display formats is a plugin. Further, there also happens to be a contributed module named Views Bootstrap, which outputs views in a bootstrap theme friendly format. This module provides views display format plugins for Bootstrap Table, Bootstrap Grid, Bootstrap Accordion, Bootstrap Carousel, and others. Again, each of those display formats is a plugin created by the Views Bootstrap contributed module. The plugin system comprises three essential concepts, plugin types, plugin discovery, and the plugin factory. We'll survey each of these and we'll actively look at the code of Drupal core to understand how plugins are discovered by Drupal. Similar to how there can be multiple content types, each with their own data structure, there are multiple plugin types each with their own metadata. From an object-oriented perspective, the plugin type is the base controlling class that defines how plugins of that type will be discovered and instantiated. The plugin type describes the central purpose of all plugins of that type. For example, we have already encountered the block plugin type and the views display format plugin type. To name a few of the types of plugins already available from Drupal core, there are image action plugins such as crop and rotate. There are field formatters and field widget plugins. There's even a block visibility plugin for implementing extremely specific logic about when a block is to be shown or not. And importantly for sites migrating to Drupal, there are migrate plugins for each step in the migrate process, appropriately called source, 
process, and destination plugins. Wow, plugins are so useful, powerful, and swappable. Plugin discovery is the process Drupal uses to find plugins within the available code base that qualify for use. Qualifying for use means, by example, how Drupal discovers plugins of type block when block plugins are needed. Technically, there are four ways that Drupal discovers plugins. They are static discovery, hook discovery, annotated class discovery, and YAML discovery. Practically speaking, most plugins in Drupal use code annotations to register the plugin with Drupal. Because code annotations are so common in Drupal, we'll focus on the annotated class discovery method in this course. Before we look into Drupal core, let's understand the benefits of using code annotations to discover plugins. Unlike the other discovery mechanisms mentioned, each plugin annotation lives in the same file as its defining object-oriented class, and almost by default of good code commenting practice, the annotation is an integral part of the code itself. From the perspective of a developer, using annotations makes it easier to find and easier to implement a new custom plugin by simply copying and pasting the annotation of an existing plugin. The syntax of annotations allow for complex structured data. In many cases, plugins already have an associated custom annotation class that can be used to both document the plugin and set the default plugin values just based on the metadata of the annotation. And this is cool. Further, you can indicate that certain default values are translatable by Drupal's multilingual subsystem. For example, of what metadata might be contained in an annotation, in the case of creating blocks from code, typically each block annotation will include the system ID of the block and also the translatable admin label of the block. We'll see this in action in a bit. First though, we need to realize that we are coming face to face with some incredible and sophisticated software engineering which powers the discovery and auto-loading of plugins. Plugins using code annotations are registered in PHP files using the PSR4 standard. PSR4 is followed throughout Drupal core. Trying to understand how PS4 does what it does can get complex real fast. So, for our learning, just acknowledge that PSR4 is the standard approach for auto-loading classes in Drupal. Precisely, PSR4 is an auto-loading specification for auto-loading classes based on file paths. Okay, in practical terms, this means that every Drupal plugin must be named and placed in its appropriate directory within the directory of the implementing module. This is an important detail, so pay attention. The appropriate structure of directory paths is this. Within your module's directory, there must be a directory spelled SRC, all lowercase. Within the SRC is another directory named plugin with a capital P. Correct capitalization of these directories is critical for Drupal to discover plugins. So now, within the plugins directory is where you create yet another directory named after the type of plugin you are creating. It is within there you will place your PHP file containing the object-oriented class for the plugin. Wow, intense. Let's affirm this knowledge by taking action and looking at various plugins contained in Drupal core to compare and discover the annotations of some common and default Drupal blocks and image actions. Let's begin. For this activity, we are going to compare the annotations of block plugins and image action plugins. Within your code editor, load the entire code base of your Drupal project. In my case, the code editor is PHPStorm, but it could be any code editor. Once the Drupal project is loaded, locate the core directory where all Drupal core code is contained. In my case, core is under the web directory. Recall that it is modules which define plugins, so let's start by looking in the modules directory of Drupal core. Great! Here, we can see all the modules provided by Drupal core. Big pipe, book, breakpoint, CK Editor, Color, and all those others. In this activity, I'm focusing on plugins that Drupal discovers from code annotations. So, I'm going to head to the System module, 
to look for the code which provides that powered by Drupal block activated on standard installs of Drupal. So within the module named system, unsurprisingly, there is a lot of code. Again, I'm focusing on demonstrating the block plugin. Remember that due to the PSR4 standards, block plugins will be located in the directory named SRC for source. And within that directory, we expect a directory named plugin with a capital P. Woohoo! Sure enough, there is a directory named plugin. Let's investigate. Opening up the plugin directory, we discovered that there are six other directories, archiver, block, condition, derivative, image toolkit, and migrate. Each of these are a plugin type being implemented by this module named system. For now, we're going to look within the block directory. Super! Some of these blocks you may be familiar with, such as system branding block, system breadcrumb block, and the system powered by block. Let's briefly examine each of these. I'm going to start with system powered by block first because it is the most straightforward. Notice that the comment that precedes the system powered by block class is the plugin annotation. This annotation is what allows Drupal, using the standards of PSR4, to automatically recognize the system powered by block class as a plugin of the plugin type block. Observe the attributes contained within this annotation. The first is ID, which defines this block ID as system underscore powered underscore by underscore block. The final attribute of this annotation is the admin label. Notice that this text is marked as translatable. The default text is English and the default label is quote, powered by Drupal. Because the label is marked as translatable, if multilingual is enabled in Drupal, the translation system of Drupal would allow for translation of this configuration string. But let's not overcomplicate. The task at hand here is to study annotations. Again, this annotation declares three things. First, on line 10, the at block tells Drupal this is a block plugin. Remember, Drupal expects this code to be a plugin because of the PSR4 standards. Due to the location of this file, this class must act as a plugin. It is line 10 that tells Drupal this is a block plugin type. Second, on line 11 is an attribute which tells Drupal that this block has a system ID of system underscore powered underscore by underscore block. Third, and finally, line 12 is an attribute for the administrative label shown in the Drupal UI. Additionally, this label is marked as translatable relevant to the multilingual system if activated. Next, let's look at the system breadcrumb block to compare its annotation. At first glimpse, the code looks more complex than this system powered by block, and it may be, but the annotation of the system breadcrumb block plugin is mostly the same. On line 14, this tells Drupal that this is a block plugin type, and line 15, the system ID of the block is system breadcrumb block. Line 16 declares that the administrative label for this block is breadcrumbs. Again, the string is translatable if need be. To wrap these block annotation examples up, let's look at the system branding block. Certainly, just by glimpsing at the code, this is the most complex block plugin we have looked at in this activity. In regards to the annotation, however, it's mostly the same. Line 16 declares this as a block plugin. Line 17 provides the system ID of system branding block. Line 18 declares the admin label. But what do we have here? Starting on line 19, we are witnessing the flexibility of annotations to allow complex data. At this point, we don't need to concern ourselves with how this newly encountered forms attribute works. It's enough to know that this annotation declares the use of an additional form to use in this system branding block plugin implementation. Exciting! So now that we have studied block plugin annotations, let's examine the annotations of another plugin type of image toolkit. Within this same plugin directory 
of the module called System, notice that there is a directory called Image Toolkit. If we open that directory, we'll see that there is another directory named GD, because GD is the default graphics library of Drupal. And within the GD directory, we see nine plugins, such as Crop, Resize, Scale and Crop, etc. For demonstration, I'll open crop.php and rotate.php. Observe that this annotation looks similar to the block plugin annotation we encountered earlier. Here, on line 8, Drupal knows that this plugin is of type image toolkit operation, and the attributes are found on lines 9 through 13. The rotate.php plugin has a similar annotation to crop. Again, the plugin type is image toolkit operation, and its attributes are similar. We don't need to go into detail about what each attribute is. The key takeaway is that by using code annotations, it is straightforward to declare Drupal plugins. So this concludes our block plugin discovery activity. Bravo! I encourage you to find and investigate other Drupal core modules which implement plugins. For consideration, you may want to start with the user and node modules to see which plugins they implement. Remember, don't modify any of the code you encounter. This is Drupal core. But have fun. Hello again. The third and final essential concept of the plugin API is the plugin factory. Recall that the other two essential concepts are plugin types and plugin discovery. The plugin factory assists you as a developer because it is responsible for instantiating the specific plugins as they are needed. The term factory implies that the plugin API leverages one of the most commonly used design patterns in software engineering, aptly called the factory pattern. Using it could not be more straightforward. In the factory pattern, a class simply creates the object you want to use. So, in our case, it is Drupal that is in charge of instantiating each plugin class as appropriate, so we don't have to. Awesome! By completing this video, you are powering up your knowledge in Drupal plugins. You've learned why plugins are beneficial, how they work, and what they do. You've gained understanding in the essential concepts of the plugin API, which are plugin types, plugin discovery, and the plugin factory. A plugin type is the base controlling class that defines how plugins of that type will be discovered and instantiated. The type describes the central purpose of all plugins of that type. Some common plugin types are the block plugin type and the views display format type. Of course, there are other types and you can create your own type. Plugin discovery is the process Drupal uses to find plugins within the available code base. There are four approaches Drupal uses to discover plugins. Static discovery, hook discovery, annotated class discovery, and YAML discovery. By far the most common approach is the annotated class discovery, which we analyzed by exploring Drupal core for code containing block annotations, which create block plugins, and image toolkit annotations, which create image actions such as crop and rotate. We realize that the plugin factory is Drupal's way to automatically instantiate the specific plugins as they are needed. Along the way, we encountered PSR4, a crucial autoloading standard followed throughout Drupal core. The key takeaway of PSR4 is that when any module has classes to autoload, a SRC directory needs to be created within the module's directory. Now, honestly, most modules will use PSR4 for something. For example, plugins or forms or controllers. All things we'll learn about. Use PSR4 for autoloading. All right, that concludes this lesson. As always, I encourage you to take time and level up your skills by browsing the resources provided. There are some valuable and important concepts here. Happy learning. Mm -hmm.